All right, uh, let's get rid of the questions. Uh, right away, the latest news, um, the, the program uh, ads transfer Trey Murphy the third from Rice. And can you, uh, can you just talk about um, what the program liked about him and, and then uh, tell, talk about what kind of uh, adjustment he'll have to make coming from a real quick tempo um, program like Rice that, that didn't put a lot into the defensive end either. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so Trey, Trey's a kid that I actually looked at out of high school uh, when, when he was coming out, uh, out of Durham. He was, a, at the time, a 6'5 guard. His dad was his AAU coach. Uh, and I knew a cousin that's real close to the family. Uh, we, same age group, cousin played ball at Richmond and um, called me and said, I got, I got a I got a, I got a Ken that that's really good. You need to come look at him. And so I did, but he was like six, five, a hundred and <laughs> probably 155 at the time. He was, he was super thin. Uh, and I just didn't think he was physical enough at the time um, to, to play for us, but he could really shoot. He was a guard. He could move and shoot. Um, and then when he became available, um, Little to my surprise, he grew to 6'8". So he's now 6'8", 200 pounds. And he, he will bring a ton of versatility. Um, he's, he can shoot the three, put it on the floor. Uh, he's more of a combo guard forward now with his size. Um, obviously, he'll have to sit. And so I think what will be beneficial for him is getting in the weight room, attacking the physicality, putting on some weight. Um, and, and having Coach Curtis um, really, really do what he does best is, is, is develop guys physically. Uh, and, and when he comes back, um, I think his versatility, especially offensively, but what he's going to be able to do uh, sitting out, learn our defense, work on those things are things that were attractive um, to, for him about us. Uh, he actually loved the fact that uh, we play defense, and he wants to get better in that area because ultimately he wants to play at the highest level. And in doing so, I think he's got to improve his defense. Okay. Um, can you talk about um, the biggest challenge? The uh, oh, hold on here. Okay. Can you just talk about the 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 pieces that the team is losing in the front court, and what your our expectations are for next year, and and how do you see Sam Hauser fitting in, and what do you expect from Caden Shedrick? Yeah, so so losing obviously losing Marmody and Braxton, um, probably two of our, our better athletes uh, on the team. Um, we lose tremendous rebounding and some defensive versatility with both of those guys. Um, so we're, we're I don't know if we'll be as good defensively, but I think with the addition of Sam. We'll be able to stretch the floor, um, make some some shots from from beyond the arc. Um, Sam can really shoot it. Uh, he proved that day in and day out in practice. Boy, could we have used that this year. Um, but his offense is going to be uh, huge for us. And then with Caden and, and even Justin McCoy having an opportunity to, to, to get on the floor and, and a chance to get more minutes, um, and, and Poppy, I think those guys are going to have to collectively uh, step up, help defend, and, and more importantly, help rebound the basketball. Okay. The, uh, obviously, the circumstances are, you know, unheard upon on how you're going about your day-to-day -day job um, being, a, being a basketball coach. Can you just talk about the biggest challenge that the staff is facing from a recruiting standpoint with this current circumstances? Yeah, I, I obviously we're, we're handcuffed. Um, I think the biggest challenge is not being able to see uh, guys play and compete, especially on the AAU circuit, um, where you get to see um, the better guys go against each other. Uh, and, and so you miss that opportunity. It's, what it's done is allowed us to do a little more Zoom and virtual uh, tours and, and FaceTime where, where you're actually face-to-face -face with the recruits because most of the time we're just texting and calling. So that's been uh, a unique challenge, but, but different. And I think a positive uh, with all of this, 
that they can put faces with names and they see us and my kids are jumping in sometimes on the Zoom calls and saying hi to the, to the recruits. So it's actually been pretty neat. Um, but but not seeing them compete and play has been been the most difficult thing. Assuming that everyone is in the same boat, how difficult will recruiting get if you uh, lose July's evaluation? I, I think it'll be extremely difficult. Um, luckily, we had a little bit of a head start with some 21s, but I think the, the biggest challenge will be the class behind them. You know, we can start contacting 22s on June 15th, um, but not being able to see those guys uh, and, and having a feel for their game, um, you know, it, it's going to be difficult, but everybody's in, you know, got the same handicap and we're just going to have to make the most of watching a ton of film. Um, I, I'm really sick of watching film, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> UVA has a, a reputation for player development. How are um, missing the individual workouts, not only on the floor, but in the weight room, how, how huge is that and what kind of adjustment has it been remotely? Yeah, that, that, that's huge. Um, we take pride in, in just, you know, getting better in, in the fundamentals of the game and not being able to be with those guys on the floor has been difficult. Uh, not having guys in the weight room, attacking the weight room with Coach Curtis has been extremely difficult. Uh, we're making the, the best of it. Um, Mike has got a program that he sent out to the guys. They're lifting um, more body weight stuff um, and, and whatever they have at their disposal at home. Um, but some conditioning and lifting, um, you know, relative to what, what they have access to. Okay, let's switch gears. Jay Huff averaged about 14 and – points and eight rebounds in his last three games. What do you think clicked for Jay and what is the key for him sustaining that production hit more consistently next season? Oh, I, I, I think what clicked was he just, there was, there was a mentality. There was a, an aggressive, assertive mentality uh, that he demonstrated towards the latter part of the year. And I just think he's got to bring that mindset um, this coming season um, continue to, to, to work uh, in every area, improve in every area, um, attack, getting stronger. But it's just a mindset. I, I think his mindset of I'm, I'm going to be aggressive, I'm going to attack, um, he was tremendous in blocking shots down the stretch. He, he, he's just got to have that mentality. Okay. What do you think the next step is in uh, Poppy's development and what progress did you see from Caden throughout the year? Yeah, I, I think Poppy just needs time on the floor. If he if he can get on the floor, stay out of foul trouble. Uh, he was like a he was like a foul every ten seconds. He was out there. Um, that was a joke, Bach. You were supposed to laugh. Well, the media is um, laughing. I'm just okay, asking uh, questions. No one cares what I think. But but it, I think if he can if, if if he can just get experience of being on the floor, um, and and again, stay out of foul trouble. His his aggressiveness, his physicality, um, we need. Uh, and there, there are times that we, we just got to have that. And then with Caden, um, obviously he sat out, but I had a chance to work him out a lot, uh, especially on game days. Um, he's just got to bring um, a, a, an aggressive, uh, assertive mentality next year. He's got some raw skill. Um, and, and he's got to just continue to get stronger and with added strength, um, which, you know, we put some weight on him. He's gotten stronger. Um, just getting on the floor and going through. He's a little bit of baptism by fire. He's just got to go through it. Gotcha. All right. Next year's team's going to have some versatility at the four. What, what kind of adjustments do you have to make um, when you're coaching the fours and, and probably the fives as well? Yeah. I don't know if, if there's a huge adjustment. I mean, you know, we're defensively, there's going to be a big time adjustment uh, for, for those guys. Uh, but offensively, um, we're going to play to those guys' strengths. Jay was able to shoot the three. Uh, Sam's going to be able to shoot the three. I think, you know, with, with more minutes, I think McCoy uh, will, will give us, uh, will be a pleasant surprise. I'm hopeful because the kid's a hard worker. Um, 
and then we'll we'll occasionally throw it in to, to Poppy and Caden and let those guys go to work down on the block. Um, but I think we're gonna live we're gonna live with Jay and Sam shooting a lot of jumpers, uh, and then we gotta hope that uh, Kihei can can shoot at his clip, and and we get Thomas and Casey and Cody and um, Jabri and and Reese to give us some additional three point shooting. Okay. Speaking of Jabri, Reese, Carson, can you just talk about each of those incoming recruits and kind of give us a recap of their seasons last year and, and the expectations coming in for this year? Yeah, so uh, unfortunately, Jabri and Carson um, both um, didn't finish their, their senior years. They, they both were injured, um, but both are healthy now, doing well. Um, Prior to their injuries, we're having really good senior years, very productive for their teams. Um, and then Reese had a hell of a year. <laughs> I mean, he was four-time state champ, player of the year in Louisiana. It just doesn't get much better than that. Um, and, and, and we're all so sad for he and his family and what they've gone through. I know it's no secret, uh, him losing a brother. Um, and so we're we're just been supportive and and behind him, but those guys uh, are eager um, to to start and be with us. Unfortunately, they're going to have to. It'll be online and virtual for a while. Um, but they all had uh, really good years. Um, obviously, Reese he was able to complete his and finish his. But the other two were were great. I even think Carson's team ended up winning on the state title without him. So they they didn't miss him much. Um, but Carson's uh, Carson's going to bring some some added shooting, um, stretch the floor, um, and Jabri's just he he does it all. He's a he's a three level scorer. Any any truth to the rumor that he's gone from six five to six seven and a half? Well, I saw his tweet that he 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 he's six seven legit. So I'm going to stick with him. I don't want him to be upset before coming here. So he is six seven. And Bach and Jim, please put that in, in all print that the kid is 6'7". <laughs> right. Um, UVA doesn't typically recruit so-called one and duns, but what is your reaction to the G League offering mid-six figures to elite prospects? Does it, think, does it affect college basketball's overall health? I don't know if it will affect college basketball in, as a whole. I, mean, I think the game's in, in a good, good place. Um, you know, our championship game last year was one for the ages. Hell, our run was one for the ages. So I think the game's in a, in a good place. Um, I think what will happen is um, those elite level guys will will look at that. That will come become more attractive to certain players. Um, and I, I just think it'll be a trickle down. You know, the the, the so called blue bloods, the the elites will then have to get the next tier guy and and we'll recruit the next tier guy and, and so on down the line. Um, but I think the game is going to, I don't think it will affect college. I'm actually surprised at, at the amount of money they're throwing at these guys. Hell, I should go turn back the hand. Uh, I don't know if I was good enough. Corey and Junior would have definitely gone. Uh, just one more question regarding uh, the, the different summer or the different off season here. Um, the guys probably won't be back unless something changes until August. Do you think that, uh, that takes a, takes away a, a lot of implementing the defense like, like we do in the summer or can they get up to speed once we get them back? Um, there's going to be a learning curve for, for the first year guys, for sure. Um, luckily Trey's sitting out. Um, so he'll, He'll get up to speed in, in plenty of time. Um, but I, I think we've got a lot coming back. Um, you know, there'll, there'll be some rust on, on these guys, but I, but I don't know if it'll, it'll take as long. Um, but the first years, they, they've got to go through it. Those guys, I mean, we, we could be practicing now they've got to experience it and go through it. I think you're much better in our system after your second and, and, and third year of, of, of gaining that experience. So even if they were here, there's still such a big learning curve um, f for how 
And Tony likes to use this, how continuous you have to be defensively. Uh, so they'll, they'll, they'll figure that part out when they right. back to hoops. All right, let's, let's go back to the 1983 draft. <laughs> NFL draft. The 83, 83 draft. Okay. When the Steelers had an aging, aging quarterback. And they refused. They didn't take Marino. Dan Marino in their own backyard. All right. Yeah, that, that sucked. Okay, all right. What's the biggest need for the Steelers tonight? And will you be watching? I will be watching. However, we don't have a first-round pick. So I'm not sure. Is tonight just first-round only? You're asking the wrong guy. I'm not right. tuned so in. I, I think I wasn't it's maybe watch first or the we, second round tonight. It yeah. is correct. First round only today. Okay. So, so first round only. So I, I, I knew that, Bob, and I wasn't going to watch until the second and third round. We need a backup QB, we need running back help, and we can always use some, some secondary and linebacker help that steal curtain defense. Um, we also could use a, a decent offensive lineman, um, but I like where we are. Um, we're going to win the North. I don't want to hear about Lamar Jackson and those freaking – Ravens right up the road. We'll be fine when Big Ben comes back. All right. Coach, thanks for joining us today. <laughs> See, you got me going, Bach, on the Steelers now. That's what we wanted. No problem. Thanks for having me. All right.